Today in our 2015 Nissan Rogue, we're going to take a look at and show you how to install the Kurt Custom Fit Class 3 trailer hitch receiver. This is going to offer the 2 inch opening. Its part number is C13204. Now here's what the hitch is going to look like once you get it installed on your vehicle. It's really nice and, and tucked away. Your main tube's up here on both sides where you really can't see it. The only thing that's going to be out behind your vehicle is going to be your, your main receiver tube here. Um, Pretty compact and they've extended it out enough here to where you'll be able to use a lot of accessories. One of the downfalls to some of the other uh, hitches that were on previous years in different rogues were that the shaft was a little bit shorter and a lot of the accessories didn't want to fit on here, but they've extended that to kind of help out with that quite a bit. You're going to have the collar here, which will take any of the hitch immobilizers and things like that and a single 5 8 inch pin. It's going to pass full through. That works great for your standard hitch pin and clips, um, your hitch locks, your anti-rattle devices. A lot of that stuff goes right in there, no issue. This is a 2 inch by 2 inch hitch, so most of your cargo carriers, your bike racks, things like that are going to work without issue. It's going to give us a 525 pound tongue weight capacity and a 3,500 pound gross trailer weight rating. Um, that means your capacities of 525 on downward force on the tongue, 3500 on the trailer weight itself. But you do need to look into the owner's manual of the uh, Rogue just to ensure it can handle that kind of deal. Um, if not, go off of whichever of those set of numbers is the lowest. You'll have the loop style safety chain connections here. So whether you're connecting safety chains in your trailer and maybe a security strap or something like that for your bikes on your bike rack, shouldn't have any issue getting it through there. It's a nice large hole. Now a few measurements that are going to be important in helping you select your ball mount, bike rack, or maybe hitch cargo carrier will be from the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening. We've got about 13 and a half inches. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of our bumper, we've got about five. Now we're going to begin the installation portion here at the rear of the car. We're going to remove a couple of these plastic, uh, just kind of lower body panels that are in here. Now each one of them will have four push pin fasteners. We've got one, two, three, and four. And also right up here at the front, there's going to be a Phillips screw. You can just follow that up. There's a small hole there and the screws right up against the frame. So let's start pulling these out. Just want to kind of pull the center of the core out and then we can take the other one. And actually we'll just remove that one here. We won't have to do that one but we will do the one for the side. That'll allow that portion to separate. Let's get the two in the rear here. And then just a small Phillips screwdriver is all we'll need up here in the front. Kind of guide that down and out, just like that. Now these we're not going to be reinstalling, so we can set them aside in the garage or if you're doing this for a customer, just give it back to them. Now we'll come over here to the passenger side and we'll just repeat that same process. Now at the bottom of our tab here, this is just behind the mud flap. We're going to reinstall one of the push pin fasteners that we took out. it will be that one on the bottom there. As you can see, that's going to firm that up. But with it removed, it allows us to easily get that cover out. So we just want to be sure we do that on both sides once we have the covers off. You see now everything's nice and stiffened back up. Now let's get the tow hook taken off. We're not going to be reusing it, so we're not going to leave it in place. To do this, we've got two bolts located here on the inside, kind of closer towards the middle of the car. Then we're also going to have the two bolts located down here in the bottom. Now these are going to require an 18 millimeter socket, and we'll just pull them out and set them aside. Now this and the four bolts we can set aside as well. We won't be reusing. Here on the side, if you'd like to, you can run your bolts back in just to plug up the weld nuts 
You know, that way you won't get any debris inside of the frame there. Now our next step is going to be to lower the exhaust down just to give us some room to work. So what we'll do is take a, it's like a regular you know, ratchet strap or a little cam buckle strap, heavy duty piece of wire, whatever you've got. We're going to stretch it along the other side here. Just pull it tight. That's going to give us some support so when we lower the exhaust it's not hanging on its own causing undue stress. Now we'll take some spray lubricant. We'll heat, hit each of our exhaust hangers with a little bit of it. It's going to ease and slide those off. We we'll have one here on the passenger side, one here on the driver's side in the same spot. And I think we'll also pull the one right here in the middle. And you just want to kind of squeeze and push those off of there. If you have an exhaust hanger removal tool, it can make the job a whole lot easier. But if not, a pry bar or screwdriver can help. You can rotate those out of the way to make it easier to get our exhaust back up into place later. Here in the middle one, it actually looks like it's set up easier to just take the top two off rather than the bottom one. Now we can just hit the release on our strap and allow that to come down slightly. All right, that should give us more than enough room to work. Now we're gonna go ahead and raise the hitch up into position. We've got an extra set of hands here to help us. We're gonna use our M12 bolts and the conical tooth washers. You wanna be sure that the teeth of that washer faces up towards the hitch. And we'll put it right up into our attachment points. Now you want to get some good turns on there so it has plenty of holding power. Then we can let the hitch rest on those bolts and finish the rest of them up. If they're two done there on the passenger side, we'll do the two same that are here on the driver's side that we've done on that side. But we're also going to have the one that's located just above our exhaust hanger there. It's going to give us three connection points for our driver's side. Now we can take just a quick look, make sure we have our hitch centered with the rear of the vehicle. And then we'll tighten down our three bolts on the driver's side, two bolts on the passenger side using a 19 millimeter socket. Now let's grab our torque wrench and torque it down to the specifications that we'll find in our instructions. Now with those all snug down, let's get our exhaust put back up into place. We want to just tighten our strap back up or whatever we've used down here and start repositioning on our hangers. Get that one done. Let's do this one. All right, with that re-secure, we'll remove our strap here and we'll be ready to hook up our trailer, our bike rack, hitch cargo carrier, whatever it is we want to do and head on down the road. With everything nice and snug, that's going to complete today's installation of the Kurt Custom Fit Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number C13204 on our 2015 Nissan Rogue.